Good afternoon. Thank you to everyone who have joined us so far. We're just going to take a moment for a few more people still appear to be joining. If anyone who has the chat window open can confirm that they can hear us, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you. It looks like you're hearing us loud and clear. We'll be back in just 30 seconds. We'll just let a few more people join and then we can kick off. Good afternoon. Thank you for everyone for joining us. My name is Imogen Blair and I'm here from the Public Sector Commission and I'm joined by Sam Andrews from the Cusca Centre at University of Western Australia. Um, we have colleagues joining us from different areas across Western Australia and I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians throughout Western Australia and their continuing connection to the lands, water and community. We pay our respects to all members of the Aboriginal communities and their cultures and to elders, both past, present and leaders emerging. Just a couple of things before we get started. Um, it looks like all of you do have your mute on, so that's great. You've got your videos off. Um, if you can just keep it that way, it just helps with noise disruptions. Um, we will be recording this and that's for the purposes of PSD, hopefully sharing the presentation to others at a later date. It won't include information about participants or your names. Um, it would just be the audio and the presentation itself. Uh, the format for this afternoon will be um, Sam talking you through the McCuska Centre. Uh, we will then take the opportunity to have questions at the end and I'll invite you throughout the presentation to use the chat function to put your questions and then we'll um, go through them uh, at the conclusion. Um, obviously, we're reliant on the web connection, so if you are having any connection issues, uh, possibly um, sometimes it helps to shut off the video function, so sometimes that might work, or otherwise, I guess the last resort is leave the meeting and then rejoin it. Um, we will be sending out all the information at the end um, or tomorrow uh, to all the people that have registered, uh, so you'll have the contact details for the McCusker Centre, so feel free just to listen. Um, and absorb that information, and then we'll follow up with, I guess, all the uh, the details that you might need. I think that might be it from me, so I'm going to pass over to Sam, and then we'll put the PowerPoint up again. Thank you. Thanks, Angie. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm just absolutely thrilled to see how many how many people have registered. It's brilliant. So thank you. Um, I have um, my, so my Andrews, I'm the internships coordinator at the McCusker Centre for Citizenship, uh, which is located at UWA. Um, I've been in the position for about two years now, um, but I've been at UWA going on nine years, um, always working in the experiential learning field. So thank you for joining me. I have a PowerPoint to, to run through um, to explain the program, our internships program and of course then to take questions at the end.
So the McCuska Center for Citizenship uh, is located at UWA. We only work with UWA students in our internship program. The center started in 2015, and we had our first round of interns in semester one of 2016. Um, to give uh, an indication of the growth over the last few years, um, this semester two, we have 125 students out. So it's grown significantly in the last year. Um, the, the aim of the centre is to foster caring, connected and socially engaged citizens. And the primary way that we try to do this is through our internship program. Um, this is a little bit more about the centre. Um, I won't read the slide to you, but you can see um, the partnerships that we've forged with over 250 organizations and over 1,200 students have taken part in the internship program. We enjoy uh, very high levels of, of satisfaction from our students and from our host organizations. Um, you can see the percentages there up near 100. Um, we also uh, receive feedback from the students and the host organizations um, qualitatively as well so not just numbers on our on our surveys but also responses about um, how the internship program leads to lifelong um, active citizenship so lots of students will undertake an internship and it opens their eyes to issues in the community that they had no idea about previously it might open their eyes to possible career paths that they hadn't considered. Um, I've heard plenty of stories about accounting students undertaking our, our community-based internships and suddenly being aware that they didn't have to work in, in corporate accounting, that they could work in a not-for-profit organization or in a um, local or state or national government organization as well. Um, so we've got these two levels of, of really positive feedback um, from both the students and the host organizations. Um, this is our, uh, we have a, so in, in July of 2019, we entered into uh, an agreement and partnership with the Public Sector Commission. Um, since then, 69 um, internships have been completed with PSC uh, agencies across, across several agencies, about 20. We have another 14 roles coming up in our in our summer round, which starts next week. Um, here's a uh, list. This is not a, a comprehensive list, but just an indication of the different areas of the public sector um, which have taken part in our internship program. It's great success. So to, to give a bit of information about our internship program and, and to explain how it's different from some of the other uh, work experience and, and practicum options on offer at UWA, um, our, our goal is to increase that, that lifelong community service, that active citizenship. So our internships include quite a lot of learning content to help the students see how they're contributing and how they can continue to contribute throughout, throughout the rest of their lives. And we, we take the, a very structured approach to the internships and to the learning activities that the students take part in, um, in addition to their, to their internship. Um, and these are the goals that we try to meet with that, that final one, pathway to lifelong community service being the most, the most important. And as I said, there are just so many examples of students undertaking an internship and afterwards telling us about how they've how they've continued to contribute to the to the community afterward. Um, I heard a great story about a student who she's incredibly busy. She's one of these very ambitious students who's studying and working and volunteering and everything else. And although she was already contributing to the community through her volunteer work, she undertook one of our internships. She was working on a research project around um, family and domestic violence, and she made herself a commitment to spend half an hour a week reading articles about new, um, new research and new findings around family and domestic violence. And that's, that's enough. She's, so she's made a commitment to continue, and, and I think that's brilliant. 
Um, to give an idea of some of the things that interns can do, uh, they, I'm, I'm endlessly amazed by the quality of the applicants who come to our group and the things that they're capable of. Um, so lots of research, obviously students um, do a lot of research in their study and especially our, our higher level students, kind of second, third year students and postgraduate students are able to do high level research. Um, including written views, that kind of thing. Um, marketing and social media is always good, and our, usually our social media and marketing roles are very, very structured. It's not just um, posting to Facebook, but coming up with a strategy, a marketing strategy about a, a certain issue or over a period of time. Um, service, um, surveying of service, evaluation of service and researching best practice and service model, models. Um, that's one that's been done um, in, in libraries, especially, um, which is quite helpful. Um, event, event preparation and coordination, working on digital tools and websites, um, and policies and procedures, updating policies and procedures, especially if a new requirement comes out. Um, so there's a lot that our students can do. Um, and we can always develop a, a bespoke role as well. Um, if at the end you'll you'll have a link to our website and you can have a look on the website, there are two flyers up that have indications and examples of what um, of real internships that have been done in the public sector. Um, and you can have a look at those examples uh, to see what's what's worked well in the past. Um, so this is the internship program from the student's point of view. Um, you can see our, our goals there again, the awareness of, of social and, and community issues um, and also helping the students develop their professional competencies and gaining some employment experience um, and in increasing their confidence in both of these areas. I always return to the fact that our program is not just about employability or about um, developing professional skills, but doing that within um, the context of service to the community. That's a really important important point and what, what sets us apart from um, work integrated learning or professional practicums that the students are doing in their, in their other studies. Um, so this is the the students prior to their internship. They complete several things. As I said, it's a it's a an application. We often receive um, twice the number of applications uh, to the number of roles we have on offer, and we actually don't mind that. It means it keeps it um, competitive and it keeps um, keeps the students striving for the opportunity. We often have students who apply more than once in order to to gain a role. It also means that we're able to be quite selective when, when matching students to roles. Um, and they also undertake some introductory sessions, including Aboriginal cultural awareness, awareness which is um, facilitated by Dr. Richard Wally. Um, and they go through a pre-placement program, which covers things like professional communication and work health and safety. Um, during the internship, the, our internships are 100 hours long. Um, so the students complete that and they also go through our learning activities that help them reflect on um, their experience, what they learn, what they learn about their contribution to the community and how to continue that. Um, and there are structured opportunities for feedback, not only from, from us, but also from the supervisor. Um, all of our students are in, enrolled in a unit, which appears on their transcript. Um, and this does an, a number of things for us. First of all, it means that the, the opportunity and, and the internship that they've completed is recognized on their, on their transcript. Um, it also um, means that it's part of their course. Yeah. So it meets the requirements, uh, fair work ombudsman requirements for unpaid internships. Um, it means they're automatically covered by UWA's student placement insurance. And it also means that any of our international students don't have to worry about um, work rights on their visa or if they're using up their hours because this is part of their study. It's not not worried. Um, so this is it from the from the student side of things. Um, it's probably good to point out that that 100 hours of internship service 
Um, our, our program runs over four teaching periods over the course of the year, um, semester one and two, and then intensive periods in winter and summer. Um, in the semesters, students usually work one day a week over the course of the 11, 12 week semester. Um, with that's, but that's not uh, strictly required. Some students are able to work two days a week and that works well for them. But generally speaking, you're working one day a week over the course of the semester. In the intensive times, winter and summer, um, students usually work four days a week to get through that 100 hours really quickly. So that can suit um, projects that are time sensitive or the kind of projects that are that work well for the student to really get in and kind of keep their keep their thoughts in that space um, for that intensive period of time. From the supervisor's point of view, which is probably you all more interested in, um, here's here's how it goes. So I'll help you to design a role. Um, we have some um, sample roles that cover most of those general things that we were talking about, but I'm happy to to help you to kind of design a bespoke role as well um, and to make sure that the, the role description is really clear and, um, and structured. And this, this way it, it meets our program requirements. It also makes it um, much clearer and easier when it comes to matching a student to make sure we get the right one. And, and it also means that we're able to just check and make sure that it will fit within the 100 hours. Um, carefully selected student interns. So our students, when they apply to our program, they apply to the program generally, not to a specific role. Um, and we do the matching. We have a very carefully designed student application that's, uh, that draws out their motivations and their strengths and skills and experience. And then that combined with a carefully designed role description means that we're able to do um, do the matching quite well and quite carefully um, and they're hugely successful. It's very rare for a, for a, a match not to work out. Um, as internship coordinator, I'll check in with you a couple of times over the teaching period, make sure everything's going well um, and see if you have any questions or need a hand with anything. And I'm also there to help should things go wrong. They don't usually, but if there's ever an issue or a question, um, I'm there to help um, and can step in to, to help with difficulties with the student as well. Again, it doesn't happen very often, but if it does, it's just nice for someone, someone to help you out there. Um, as far as requirements go, there's a bit of paperwork. Um, students, when they, prior to starting their internship, they sign a student deed poll, and this um, commits them to professional conduct um, and to following our rules as well as your rules. Um, and that needs to be countersigned by their supervisor. There are uh, internship evaluations uh, completed at the midpoint of the internship, so around 50 hours, and also at the end. Um, and this is done in collaboration with your, with your student intern, um, usually through, through a meeting. Um, there, each student has a, a timesheet to keep track of their 100 hours over the course of the time, um, and we ask you to sign that off. As a supervisor, you need to be available to the intern for the duration of the internship. Now, this doesn't mean sitting right next to them, but just being available if they have any questions, um, if they need a hand. Um, and we really prefer that students are, are on site, that they're they're in the work environment, um, meeting the team that they're working with and, um, and really engaged with the work. Um, sometimes we, we make an exception to that and we're able to support work um, done at working from home or working remotely. Either way, um, we need to make sure that the student has the, the support or the space and the access that they need. So these are the things. As far as supervisor requirements, um, there's not a specific level of, of employee or, or anything like that. I mean, the supervisor needn't be a, a manager from our point of view. Um, we just ask that they're paid members of staff. Of, this would come up so often with, um, with agencies of the public sector, but with some of our smaller not-for-profit, it does express itself. Um, 
So there's this this level of support that's given to supervisors um, is also given to the students. Um, I members of the internship team also check in with the students a few times over the course of the of the teaching period, and of course they've got their engagement with peers and with the unit coordinator as they're completing their their learning activities as well. And these are my contact details. Um, if you're interested to talk further or if you have any questions, um, just get in touch. Or if any of your colleagues who weren't able to make it today would like to have a chat, I'm really happy um, to make time to have forum or otherwise meetings um, to talk through the program. Um, and now I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much for sharing that information with us, Sam, and I'm sure people have a few questions. Um, we do have one that's just come through from Kelly, and Kelly had emailed us as well, and Kelly is um, part of North Regional TAFE in Karatha, and she asked about in terms of uh, possible regional placements. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit further about those yes. options? Yep, very happy to. I'm really pleased this question has come up. Um, we're in, in, in great support of regional internships. The McCusker Centre has um, funding available to provide students with travel bursaries in order to ensure that the student's not out of pocket at all and to make the opportunities available to, to all students every week. Um, we have, I think we've got 18 regional roles in, in the coming summer round um, and they, they work quite well. The idea with those, they only work in the um, in the intensive se sessions, so either winter or summer, and the idea is that the student travels to the place and stays for the duration. Um, so usually, because they're more likely to be working full-time, it's closer to two weeks or two and a half weeks rather than the four that an intensive session usually would be, um, and it can work really nicely for those intensive projects or, or event funding as well. Um, so very happy um, for regional regional placements and it's an excellent opportunity for the students. Um, we just have received another question. It's a very good question that a few of you are probably asking. In terms of um, payment of interns or agency costs, um, can you just explain that a bit more? Sure. So because our, intern our internships are completed through enrolment and enrolment in a unit that appears on the student's transcript, um, they meet the requirements for unpaid internships. So the students don't receive any payment. Um, and really the only cost to agencies would be a supervisor's time um, and space, desk, desk space, um, and any access issues, you know, providing login to the computer or card access yeah. to the building, that kind of thing. Yeah. But the internships are unpaid. Okay. So no direct cost to the agency? No, no. that's right. Yeah. So, um, and you explaining, Sam, a question that came through on email was um, you explained your role and the role of the centre. So you act as a conduit between an agency directly and um, looking at uh, internship opportunities. So it's not necessarily through the commission itself. That's right. Yep. So I'm happy to be contacted with any questions or, or to discuss. Just a couple more questions coming through. Um, Yes, uh, we will be providing a copy of the presentation for people's information and also some further links to the website. Um, we've also got a further question there is, uh, can agencies be, uh, interns be placed in an agency at any time through the calendar year? I think you're talking about oh, the semesters. Yeah. So do I... That's a good question. So we do run, we run the internships in rounds. Um, at the moment, we're accepting roles for uh, semester one. Or, or winter of 2021, um, and we advertise the rounds uh, quite quite um, openly um, through through email, so um, we can we can send those out to you and let you know when they open and when they close. Um, as far as uh, submitting a, a role description, starting that process of, of, um, of finalizing the role, that we usually have several months in lead up to to around starting. So um, semester one runs from March to June, 
And then winter runs usually from mid-June to mid-July. Um, semester two runs from kind of August through to November. Um, and summer is broken into two sessions, either mid-November to mid-December or mid-January to mid-February. A lot of dates to throw at you, but um, but the information's on the website as well. And we'll send that through on email to people too. Um, I know from the Commission's perspective, we've had a couple of interns work with us on projects, and some of them have relied on data skills. But I know um, a colleague recently reached out to the Custer Centre quite early because it was seems like a quite a specific skill set that they're looking for. Um, and you were able to sort of do some work around that and you were able to sort of pinpoint the, the school and the background that was probably more suited to that um, intern opportunity. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah. The number of, in, of applications that we receive from students means that, that we're, we're able to be really careful in our matching um, and we receive applications from uh, first year students right up through to the occasional PhD candidate. So we've got quite a range of skills and um, range of, of interests there as well. And I invite anyone else who has any questions. Um, so I guess while well, we're just waiting for any questions to come through, I guess the main uh, thought for people maybe to take away is to think about those semester one timing, which would be about thinking about now having it sort of um, fleshed out a bit more by December to have a chat with you um, and then with the idea of January is when you would want the sort of the description quite clear. That's right. Yeah. 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 And Student then, applications for semester one close on the 17th of January. Um, so we'd love to have the rules on yeah. So maybe for public sector agencies, pre-shutdown is a good idea to have everything sort of starting to <laughs> align. Looks like we might have exhausted the questions. Um, we will provide Sam's details in the email, so if you've got any further questions, you can contact her. Um, Sam, is there any other last, parting words from you? Just to say thank you. Thank you for attending. Excellent. Well, thank you for the um, opportunity to talk with you all. Um, we will follow up with an email. And, um, yes, have a great afternoon. Thank you.